Today, we celebrate Sir M. Visvesvaraya, a visionary engineer and statesman whose innovations transformed India's infrastructure and industry. Known for his precision and dedication, Visvesvaraya's work laid the foundation for modern India's progress. Join us as we explore the life of a man whose engineering marvels continue to inspire generations of builders and dreamers. We are honored to have with us the man himself, Sir Moksha Gundam Visvesvaraya, joining us across time. Though he lived in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, his contributions and ideals resonate with us today. Sir, thank you for being here. Thank you for this kind introduction. It is a pleasure to join you, even in this remarkable way. I am happy to share my story with your audience. Let us begin at the beginning. Today, we will journey through your life, from childhood, through your engineering triumphs and public service, to your philosophy and lasting message. But first, sir, tell us about your early years and what shaped you as a young boy. I was born on September 15, 1861, in the village of Mudanahali, in the kingdom of Mysore, now in Karnataka. My family spoke Telugu, and our ancestors had migrated from the village of Mokshagundam in what is now Andhra Pradesh. My father, Mokshagundam Srinivasa Shastri, was a learned Sanskrit scholar, and my mother, Venkatalakshmi, a devoted homemaker. We were not wealthy but my parents were wise and principled. From early on, my father instilled in me the importance of education and integrity. I received my primary education in our village school. Later, I moved to Bangalore for higher studies. I attended the Wesleyan Mission High School and then the Central College in Bangalore, where I earned my Bachelor of Arts degree in 1881. My father died when I was only about 15, which was a great loss for our family. After his passing, we faced financial difficulties. To continue my studies, I began tutoring younger children in our town. I remember using kerosene lamps late into the night to read and prepare my lessons. Those years taught me perseverance and frugality. Despite the hardships, I was fortunate to have a strong education. My family's values of honesty, hard work, and service stayed with me. I often say that those early struggles were blessings in disguise, for they taught me discipline and the joy of learning. It's inspiring how your father's guidance and your own determination guided you through adversity. You've mentioned living by the motto, simple living, high thinking. That spirit seems to have begun in your youth. After completing my bachelor's, I pursued engineering. In 1881, I enrolled at the College of Science in Pune, now Pune, then affiliated with the University of Bombay. I immersed myself in civil engineering studies, and in 1883, I graduated, ranking at the top of my class. In 1884, I joined the Public Works Department, PWD, of Bombay as an assistant engineer. My first assignments were in Nasik and Pune, working on local water reservoirs. We faced challenges managing monsoon rivers, so I focused on efficient water storage and supply. In 1903, I devised what is known as the Block Irrigation System, which organizes irrigation lands into blocks to distribute water more evenly and reduce waste. This block system was recognized by the Indian Irrigation Commission and later applied in various canal projects. I also patented a system of automatic floodgates. For example, at Lake Fife near Pune, Kadakvasla Dam, in 1903, these gates automatically raised the water level up to the maximum safe limit increasing the reservoir's capacity by about 25%. This innovation was later installed at other dams, such as Tigra in Gwalior, and even at the Krishna Raja Sagara Dam we would build in Mysore. In 1894, I was sent to Sukur 
in Sindh, now in Pakistan, to assist with the municipality's waterworks. By 1899, I was invited to join the Indian Irrigation Commission. I helped implement irrigation improvements in the Deccan Plateau. In 1906, the government of British India sent me to Aden, in present-day Yemen, to study water supply and drainage. My report and project plan for Aden were accepted and put into action. Throughout these years, I never sought personal gain. I remained a government servant. In 1908, after 24 years of service, I took a voluntary retirement. I traveled abroad, to Europe, America, even Japan, to study their infrastructure and industry. Observing the modern world taught me much about planning and development. Soon after returning, I was asked by His Exalted Highness, the Nizam of Hyderabad, to help with a crisis. In 1908, the Musi River flooded Hyderabad catastrophically, causing great loss of life. The Nizam invited me to devise a flood protection scheme. After careful study, we recommended creating reservoirs upstream of the city. Indeed, under the Nizam's rule, Osman Sagar, built 1920, and Himayat Sagar, built 1927, were constructed on the Musi and its tributary. These lakes have since protected Hyderabad from flood and now supply its drinking water. I take humble satisfaction that those projects have safeguarded so many lives. But perhaps the most well-known of my projects is the Krishna Raja Sagara, KRS, dam on the river Kaveri in Mysore, near Mandya. I served as the chief engineer for KRS. Construction began in 1911 and the dam was completed in 1932. It created a large reservoir that converted surrounding wastelands into fertile farms. The dam now provides irrigation and drinking water for Mysore, Mandya, and even Bengaluru. It became, as Mr. Gandhi predicted, one of the largest reservoirs in the world at the time, and it truly helped perpetuate progress in this region. I am told people still visit the dam as a symbol of our work. Besides these, I contributed to many other projects. We protected the Visakhapatnam port from sea erosion by engineering breakwaters, ensuring it remained a vital harbor. I oversaw water supply schemes in Kolhapur and Pune, in Dule and the Nira canals of Bombay Presidency. My block irrigation system brought water to many villages. Every project taught me the importance of planning and collaboration between engineers and local people. Your work literally changed landscapes and protected communities. It's extraordinary to hear how engineering served the public good. In addition, we founded the State Bank of Mysore in 1913, initially called Mysore Bank, to provide credit for farmers and businesses. The Bangalore Press was started to advance printing and education. We encouraged chambers of commerce and clubs to strengthen industry. Even an agricultural university was planned to support modern farming. My philosophy was that government should build key institutions and then encourage private enterprise to grow with them. None of this would have been possible without the encouragement of the Maharaja, who famously said to me, Work is worship. He gave me freedom to implement visionary plans. Together, we also commissioned new railway lines and improved roads. For example, laying groundwork for a highway up to Tirumala and Tirupati. I considered it my duty to look beyond Mysore as well. At age 90, I even advised on the location of the Mokama Bridge in Bihar applying engineering for the benefit of all India. Many of the institutions you founded endure to this day. You mentioned the steel plant and the bank. What about education? Education was close to my heart. In 1917, we established the Government Engineering College at Bangalore, one of India's first engineering institutes. This college would eventually be renamed the University Visvesvaraya 
College of Engineering, UVCE, in my honor. Earlier, I had encouraged setting up a polytechnic school in Bangalore, now Sri Jaya Chamarajendra Polytechnic, for practical technical training. We also supported expanding the Bangalore Agricultural University for research in farming. I believed engineers and scientists were the architects of the future. Beyond government offices, I wanted communities that trained skilled men and women. I was a member of the Board of Governors for the Banaras Hindu University, BHU, in the 1920s and worked with educationalists to shape India's future leadership. In every venture, my goal was to knit industry, agriculture, and education together for national progress. Clearly, sir, you were building a foundation for generations to come. Your legacy in education and industry in Karnataka and beyond is immense. Throughout my life, I held fast to certain principles. Above all, I believed that work itself is worship. To serve society, one must be honest, diligent, and disciplined. Even as a busy Dewan, I insisted on rising at 4.30 every morning. I walked to the office and personally took care of small tasks like washing and ironing my clothes. From 7 a.m. until 8 p.m., I worked steadily with just a lunch break. I never allowed official authority to lessen my personal accountability. For example, when I was entitled to an official car, I politely declined to use it for private purpose until I could afford my own. I recall a story. A friend noticed I switched lamps and pens when leaving office work. I explained that the first lamp and stationery were provided by the state for government work, so I would only use those for official duties. When doing personal work, I used my own lamp and pens to avoid even the slightest misuse of public funds. This strict discipline extended to planning. I always said, plan or perish. In every project, from dams to banking, we planned meticulously. Only then could we execute effectively. By and large, I maintained high standards of personal conduct and efficiency. I believe this prolonged my life and kept me sharp. In fact, I was still contributing advice well into my 90s. I urge the younger generation to adopt these values. Wake early, work earnestly, and keep humility. Knowledge is precious, but it must be applied for the common good. A clean heart and mind are the best tools of an engineer or statesman. Sir, for your service to the nation, you received many honors. In 1915, King George V knighted you as a Knight Commander of the Indian Empire, making you Sir Mokshagundam Visvesvaraya. After India's independence, you were awarded the Bharat Ratna in 1955, our country's highest civilian honor. Your 100th birthday in 1960 was celebrated with a commemorative postage stamp. And as we mentioned, every September 15th is now Engineers Day in India, in tribute to your legacy. Truly, your life and work have been honored across generations. Looking back on my life, I am heartened by what young people have built since then. My only pride is that I could contribute in a small way. To the new generation, my message is clear. Love your country and devote your work to its service. Embrace education and innovation, but keep ethics first. Remember that engineering and science are about solving real problems. As I often said, science is about knowing, but engineering is about doing. So apply your knowledge to improve lives, whether by bringing water to parched fields, lighting a village, or running a factory efficiently. Plan carefully, execute with dedication, and always work honestly. India's needs are vast. There is much to build and many challenges to overcome, but with integrity, hard work, and vision, you can meet them. I dream of seeing India bloom and our people prosper through knowledge and industry. 
I trust the future is in capable hands. Sir Moksha Gundam Visvesvaraya's journey from a small village boy to an engineer of the nation is truly inspiring. He helped transform whole regions through irrigation and flood control, laid the foundations of industry, and championed education and discipline. His own life exemplified the values he preached, humility, diligence, and service. We thank Sir MV for sharing his wisdom with us today. As we conclude, let his story remind us that true greatness lies not in wealth or power, but in one's character and contributions to society. Thank you all for listening. May Sir Visvesvaraya's legacy inspire us to work towards a brighter future for our nation. Sir M. Visvesvaraya's legacy is a testament to the power of innovation and perseverance. If his story inspires you, share this episode with friends and family. Let's keep his spirit alive by building a future as strong and visionary as his dreams. Jai Hind! Bharat Mataki Jai!